Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Section 6, Getting into Color Correction. In this video, we will look at the color correction workspace and how to read scopes and waveform monitors. All right, so we just finished our audio editing and we have our show sounding good. Now we want to go back to the picture edit and now work on color correction, enhancing the color levels, brightness, saturation, getting the most out of the footage that was shot and now edited together. We'll also look at looking at waveform monitors and vector scopes. So those of you who worked in the analog era probably remember doing that on TV monitors in your control room. But now they're built right into Premiere, as well as most other nonlinear editing programs. So the first thing I want us to do is look at my workspace here. I'm back to the normal workspace for editing. I have a little sequence here of a few clips. And I've added some bars and tone at the start right there. So what we want to do first is open up the color correction workspace. So if you go to window, under workspaces, color, there we go. This is the color correction workspace. All right. So you notice the big difference is the presence of the vector scope and the waveform monitor. All right. Now, there are other different scopes you can add, histogram, Prade, but the first two I want to really focus on, the most important ones, are the vector scope YUV and the waveform monitor. So, very simply, the vector scope measures the color and the waveform monitor measures luminance, or in other words, brightness of your footage. That's why I put down bars and tone at the start to show you all the colors and how they're being measured by the vector scope. Okay? So as you can see here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six points, red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow. And those are the main colors in my bars and tone. Blue, red, magenta, green, cyan, yellow. All right, and you'll notice the dots are in the square here, okay? That indicates that they are at the proper measurement, okay? There is a bit of room to push it here if you had to, okay? Mostly if you're working with other footage. But for bars and tone, you want it here, and that's where it is. And that's easy in Premiere because Premiere makes these bars and tone, and this is Premiere's vector scope. So it's going to line up perfectly. But that's just to show you how the colors line up and how Premiere reads them in the vector scope. And in the waveform monitor, that measures the brightness of the image in your program monitor. So you can see here that some colors are brighter than other colors in the image. So this is basically a graphical representation of a waveform of the footage you shot shown in the timeline. So if I go to some of the clips I shot, now I've muted my audio so I can talk over it watching it so I can explain what we're seeing. So right away you notice the waveform is different on this clip. So what we're seeing here is the waveform of this. So if I play this, you're going to see this change as the footage moves along. Same with uh, this one. And really importantly, if you look at this one here, pay attention to the gentleman walking into frame and watch here. As I play it, there he goes there. So it truly is a waveform representation of what we're seeing. Okay? Going back to this clip, notice at the top, I have a hard line here at 100. All right, that indicates clipping. So this measures luminance, all right? This indicates that a portion of my footage is too bright for the waveform monitor, and therefore it has clipped it at 100, all right? It's more than it can handle. On the right side of the frame, and lo and behold, we have right side of the frame, a bit of the sky blown out here, okay? This image doesn't have it. This is perfectly shot, if I do say so myself. It's not clipped. The luminance tops out at 90, which is where you want it to be. And we can see here, there's no blown out sky portions. We can see the cloud detail. It's looking pretty good. And here, this one looks pretty good too. We see our gentleman here moving across the frame except for right here, a little bit of clipping in the top left, which is right there, okay? So up over 100. 
everything else topping out at 90. And just a tip, if you're doing text in Premiere, especially white text, the brightness will usually default to 100, the value, when you open your text editor. Always change that to 90. That way your text won't be the problem if something's blown out. That's one thing you can control when making text, the brightness, so it won't blow out the rest of your image. And same here. Two clipping portions here and here, which would indicate this spot and that spot. And this one, pretty bang on. Okay? So that's how the waveform sees that. If I were to add an effect, just very simply, I will add hue light saturation effect, color balance. There we go. So say I add it to this. I'm going to make some extreme values here just to show you how it can change in the vector scope and the waveform monitor. All right. So here in my effect controls, if I crank the saturation, watch here is the vector scope. The color gets ramped up. Now it's blown out completely and it looks pretty bad. So anything like that, not good. All right. It's blown out. There's way too much. It's filling up all of the areas on the form. Okay. And watch as I bring it back. So I'm back to normal about there near zero. If I go to negative 100, which would indicate no saturation, we have no waveform at all. No color, nothing to measure. And also the waveform monitor, since there's no color, portions of it aren't as bright as they were. So we're not seeing as much here as well. Okay. If I were to take the lightness and ramp that up, watch the waveform on. It goes up and up and up. Okay. So what's happened is I've added the lightness, made it such a high value that there are no more dark areas in the image. Therefore, nothing for this waveform monitor to see or measure. The darkest spot in the image starts around here. And if I keep going higher, right to 100, I've clipped the whole thing. Same thing with hue. If I adjust the hue, we're going to see the vector scope change on the color wheel to show that the colors are different. Okay? Just to give you an idea of how that works. There we go. Very important to do that on a shoot as well to make sure you're shooting everything properly and have the right levels. But very important still to see that in post production to make sure you have the right values on the shots you're working with. Okay? So let's look at the waveform monitors and a bit of an introduction to the color correction workspace.